All right, in this video, I'm gonna show how to use Disco Diffusion with Google Colab to make videos using text prompts. Here's some videos that show what you can do using this method. So what is Disco Diffusion? I'm on their GitHub right now, and you can see it's a Frankensteinian amalgamation of notebooks, models, and techniques for the generation of AI art and animations. What I've noticed is a little bit kind of jitterier, um, if that's a word. Uh, it has more jitter than uh, something like Stable Diffusion, but I think that's kind of interesting. It gives it an artificial feel to it, which I kind of actually like. First thing I'm gonna do is go up to Google and just Google Colab, Disco Diffusion. Once I do that, I, I, I come up with this notebook here um, and I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna use this. So you'll see once you click on that, you have a, uh, a notebook here that actually has all the code that you need to run this. So um, I'm tr gonna try to show this in a really simplified manner. I'm not gonna go over all the settings, but just wanna show enough to get you started. The first thing I'm gonna do show how to navigate around here. Uh, if you click up in this uh, corner here, you can see the table of contents. And this is helpful for navigating the different sections because there's things that I'm gonna wanna get to. You could definitely scroll down this way, but I, I found it's kind of a little bit hard to navigate, especially when you see all this code. And um, like I said, I'm just trying to get show you how to do this in a simplified manner without even really knowing too much about the code. Uh, uh, you'll also want to connect to a new runtime. So this is going to connect to a GPU um, through the cloud. And uh, I am using Colab Pro because there are some, you can do this with a, a free Colab account, uh, but you're going to hit some limits in, as far as speed. And also uh, when you do video, uh, you're doing frames basically. And, and sometimes when you do the frames, you're going to actually run over your um, free allotment. So I have a, a Google or a Colab Pro account, um, but you know, you might be able to do this if, if you're doing something short with, uh, without it. So I'm connected here, it shows that I'm connected. Uh, a few things that you might wanna look at. Like I said, I'm trying to make video out of this. So um, before I start running this, I'm gonna go um, and look at my animation settings down here. So that's in the table of contents. I'm gonna go to animation mode. Now I'm just gonna do simple 2D animation, but I'll set that there. Um, you can use video or um, even still images to um, start your renders, but um, I'm just gonna use a prompt. So here we have the max frames, it's set to 10,000. I wanna do something really short, maybe like, uh, maybe just 30 frames just to do a proof of concept. And then you can see here there, um, there's some commands here. Now these numbers, zero is, and, and the colon that represents frame zero and it's, Right now, if you look at this, it's saying as you go from frame zero to 10, there's gonna be a bit of a zoom. Uh, it's, first it starts at one and then it goes to 1.05. So um, you could change this, like if, I'm, if I know I'm doing, um, you know, maybe I'll do 15 or something. I, like, I'm just showing how you can change this and you can also change, if you feel like there's too much zoom, you could set it to something smaller. Um, and there's some other things here. And you could you can actually uh, put in keyframes to kind of uh, animate this, but I wanna keep it simple, like I said. Um, okay, there, there are other things here that, uh, again, these, there are definitely more settings that you can get into them, but I'm just trying to get us uh, started and let you play with it um, a little bit later. So if you go into your settings, this is uh, above the animation settings, the overall settings, you'll see the batch name. So this is um, what folder your your frames are gonna go into, your images, your output. So I'm gonna say uh, Disco Fusion Demo or something. Um, the steps is the number of, of intermediate steps taking to create this image. You have um, your width and the height, which is also good. Um, the, there are guidance scales, I think the, the higher the number, you know, the more um, I think the prompts or the image, uh, initial image will affect it. Um, 
but like I said, I'm just going to uh, want to set this up to be uh, just really quick and just get us going. Um, uh, the next setting I'm probably going to do if I'm just being really simple is go up to prompts. And here you can uh, put your prompts in. Now, um, here you'll see also that there's the same notation zero. It means uh, frame zero, and then it's showing the prompt at that frame. And then at frame 100, it's going to put in this prompt. Um, so uh, it, it's giving you examples here, uh, but I'm going to go in and you know change some things. So as long as I keep everything Um, within these quotes, so like I could delete this and I basically just uh, inside the quotes put whatever my prompt is. So uh, in this case, I might do like, uh, like a single purple flower, um, photorealistic, uh, detailed. I'm just do something like that. And um, because I want to go to frame 30, you know, if I want to change things, maybe I want that to happen at frame 15. Uh, I'll say something like, uh, whoops, um, single yellow flower. So maybe I want some sort of change here. Uh, photorealistic, uh, detailed, uh, um, I don't know, blurry, or uh, I just want to put something else to kind of show this. Uh, maybe it's a close up. Uh, okay, so uh, these are the text prompts I'm using. Um, there are things that you can change here um, display rate and the number of batches. Um, one thing, if you're doing um, a lot of frames, I'm only doing 30, so I'll probably be okay, but I've noticed that sometimes the um, these these runs will kind of stop in the middle and you might need to resume your run. So if you have this clicked, you can actually pick up from where you started. Um, and I think that's actually probably all I need to, for the very simple use case uh, of what I'm gonna do. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is, you know, just I'll probably go up to the top or uh, I could just say run all. Um, and there's a few things that are gonna happen when I, when I go to run this, it's going to, um, Ask, you know, give me this warning, but um, I'm gonna override that. Uh, it's gonna um, save into my Google Drive folder. So it's gonna try to connect to my Google Drive account. So uh, that's the next piece in there. And I'm gonna log in and continue. Um, okay, so uh, that's that. Everything is gonna start to run and you can start see uh, when they've run, there's this check mark here. And um, it's gonna take some time to load the models and do all that. And um, once you start running it, you'll, uh, you'll actually start to see uh, the output down in this section. So we'll wait till we get to that point. Um, it, like I said, it's gonna take a little while and if you can check the progress if you want to, but um, just to be a little patient at this point. So like I said, when the uh, images or the prompt is uh, being run, you should see the progress down here. Uh, depending on the number of steps you have and the um, uh, preview settings, uh, this may uh, vary, may be updated differently. Um, one thing that happened to me is it actually took a long time to run, and I think one of the places where you might encounter some issues is um, a little bit closer up to the top. Um, this is now you can just look at the code here. So this is preparing the folders. We said it connects to Google Drive. Um, I think here is where you kind of, you may or may not run into some issues. Um, there was one block of code that I looked at right, uh, I read this. Um, there are some reports that with a T4 or V100 on Colab downgrading, to a previous version of PyTorch may be necessary. So this code was actually commented out like that, and I just selected it, and then if you do command and backslash, that will uncomment it. And so I needed to do this um, to get it to run. 
Uh, I've noticed that sometimes as these notebooks, this is uh, Disco Diffusion 5.7, but as you get different versions, uh, they might get deprecated or you might need to change some things around. So uh, just be mindful of that. And um, the, for the files themselves, this is actually the video that was generated. Um, you can see it starts with a purple flower and it, it's a little bit hard to tell, but there's actually this yellow piece that's coming out. And I think that was the uh, effect of that prompt. You can see all the frames are here. Um, so this is 14 and I think it was around 15 where if I just get a little bit closer, I think it starts to, uh, the yellow piece starts to come in there. Uh, and if you look at one of the later frames, you'll see that. Um, so that's that's the output and uh, the images themselves, I'm going to back up a little bit. So this is that folder I created, Diffusion, Diff Disco Diffusion Demo, that was the batch name. Uh, if we keep backing out of here, um, I'm in my drive, there's a folder called AI, and within that there's a Disco Diffusion folder, and uh, there is, there's um, images out, which is where all the images go. There's these uh, images that you can, you, you can use to sort of set the, the first prompt um, and the models in here. So I'm gonna just click in here and this is the folder Disco Diffusion Demo. So that's where those, those files will get outputted. Uh, they first get outputted as single frames and then uh, there's a little bit of code at the end. If we go back to our uh, collab that will create that video file out of it. So that that's uh, that's a nice piece to be aware of. And then you can set the, the frames per second. I think uh, especially with with AI stuff like this, I wouldn't set it to like you know high, higher like thirty frames or anything. Um, slow. I think it's small or uh, slower or uh, lower um, FPS is better. Now let's look at using an image to drive the generative AI. Um, I just found this flower image here, I just looked up purple flowers in a Google search, and I'm gonna use that. Um, what I'm gonna do is go into my folder, uh, this is again in the AI folder, my Google Drive Disco Diffusion, and there's this folder right here called in it Images, and I have some images in there that I've used. Uh, I downloaded this file, and I'm gonna put it into there, so in my drive. Um, this is what that looks like, just for reference. And I'm gonna go back into my uh, collab, and hopefully, you know, you can see it's still connected. Sometimes if you leave, uh, this could get disconnected, so you wanna reconnect it, but uh, when I run this now, it should be a little bit faster because I've already run the code up here um, to, to set it up and, and do any installs. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll probably keep most of the, uh, most of these the same. Um, I can I can save into the same folder and it will just um, save the files with a, a it'll, add, it'll add a number to the you know what version it is, uh, and it does that automatically. It's not going to overwrite your folder um, your files, so that's really nice. Uh, so then we go down to here in images, and you need to put the path to um, that file. So I'm going to go into my files here. Um, you'll go to Drive. You can open it up and my drive and AI. And I'm gonna go into Disco Diffusion uh, and in images. And I should have that, it was, yeah, this one here, a purple flow, uh, flower. Uh, copy the path and then I'll put the path in here. Okay, I think that should do it. Uh, so now it knows where to go and then make sure you set skip steps to 50% of the steps if you want to use an, an image. Okay, so let's go to 50% um, of your steps. So I'll go back. How many steps am I using? 250. So uh, I probably want to set this to 125. Um, okay. And I think that's most of what I need to do here. Again, I'm just gonna use 30 seconds or 30 frames. And what I can do is I'll go to where I, I changed the code for the first time. It was probably in this block here. I'm gonna go back into uh, this right here. So you can see I'm in settings and what I'll probably do is just click on this to make sure I'm on, the, on, the, on there and then I'll just say run 
um, run after. And so that will run everything after it. So I don't have to run all this code up here because it's already loaded. You can see there's a green check mark there. If, if you've left and you, know, and you don't see that green check mark, then you might need to redo it. But uh, just to keep things moving, I'll, I'll only run the code after and then it's gonna run all the code blocks after it. So it's, you can already see it's, it's run this. Um, and yeah, you can open and close these uh, to kind of hide things. I'm gonna use the same prompt, but maybe I'll get a better result hopefully, because um, I'm using an image to start with and it's doing the run here. And yeah, yeah, you can actually see it's using that uh, as a starting point, and then from there it's gonna start creating things. Yeah, so that's another way to uh, work with this. Again, you can see this, the steps that we set here, um, and it, it's gonna take some time. It's going to be saving it into the Google Drive folder. So if we go back into our images, It'll be going into this folder once it's ready. Um, one other thing that's nice, I didn't point this out, but if you go into your file, you can see all the settings. Um, if you go into your folder, you can see the settings in this. You can see here's the number, Disco Diffusion Demo Zero. So the next one will be uh, one. And it has all the settings you've used so that you can um, try to replicate that if you, uh, or use it for your reference if you, uh, if you forget or just want to see it again. All right, so here's all the frames, and then this is the video that was created. You can see it used that first image that we uploaded uh, as a foundation, and then it kind of built off of that. So that gives you a little bit more control uh, for the output itself. To review, we went over using Disco Diffusion in Google Colab to create images and then videos. I hope that was helpful and let me know if you create anything using this method.